What I want to talk about, finally, is the upshot of all those videos about gun control. David, nice and nasty, because the issues are bigger than. Um, the biggest issue has to do with preparedness. Hopefully I covered that enough. But it also has to do with a common misperception by baby Christians about what Christianity even is. They, being babies, okay, Christian babies, are like any other babies. Babies are all focused on sounds and feelings. And to them, um, Christianity is about sound and feeling. So if it sounds bad, or it feels bad, it must not be spiritual. So if I feel bad, or, or somebody sounds bad, well that person is not a good Christian. You grow out of that, but you know, the only way you grow out of it is if you learn the Bible. Christ was not like that, okay? He's a king. K kings can't afford to be like that, all right? The Christianity that's been pandered to us for so long is that, oh, you must be nice, okay? But Christians aren't like that either. Not any of the church fathers were like that, although they were bad, but not because that they were nasty. They were all nasty. They talk nice at times, and they talk nasty at times, and if you read enough of what anybody writes, they're nice and nasty. Christ talked nice sometimes, and he talked nasty sometimes. God in the Old Testament talks nice sometimes, and he talks nasty sometimes. It's both. And if you hope to grow up in the spiritual life, you're going to have to learn that. There's a time to be nasty and a time to be nice. Truth is full spectrum. There's a time when you war and there's a time when you make peace. There's a time when you rest. There's a time when you work. It's both. God joined all the opposites together. He wanted all the opposites to exist freely. So you got nice and nasty. And sometimes God is nice and sometimes he's nasty. And therefore the Christian has to learn when to be nice and when to be nasty. Paul is sometimes very nasty. The writer, you know, James, when he wrote James, he's very nasty in that letter. Christ calls the Pharisees illegitimate. That's another word for bastard. That they are not legitimate sons of God. And of course they called him a bastard because, you know, they claim that Mary was pregnant out of wedlock. Okay? So, you're going to have to learn, if you hope to grow up, that there's a time to be nice and a time to be nasty, and both apply at different times and in different situations. Now, in order to practice those situations, it's like practicing piano. Okay? Sometimes you're playing a really light adagio. Sometimes it's chopsticks. Okay, sometimes it's a minuet, different kinds of music, different kinds of speech. See, it's not just black or white, it's both, and all the colors in between. So if you're subscribing to the apostate Christian view, that, oh, the, the pastor's supposed to be nice, and you have to talk nice to me, and if you don't talk nice, you're not a good Christian then honey, you're such a hypocrite and so far behind it that really, you know, nobody should even talk to you. Okay, it's understandable your first year or two, especially if you were led to the Lord by somebody who's apostate and who thinks that they have to be nice to be a good Christian. You're going to think that way too for a while, but you get a real rude awakening from God and the people around you, hopefully within the first five years of your being a believer, that that's not exactly the right that's not true. That's not, it's not valid to call yourself a good Christian only if you're nice. Alright? This has turned into something of a rant and I didn't mean it to. The point is that God is full spectrum. The kingship of God is full spectrum. And you're in training to become a king. Not to be a nice wimpy doormat. And is it pleasant to have to be nasty? No, of course not. I always get sick every time I have to be stern. You know, I have to play the school marm role now. I never wanted to be a mother. 
Mothering means you have to punish your kids. I don't like doing that. I'm a wimp myself. I'm one of those people who just, I like being nice all the time. But I'm in violation of the Bible when I'm like that. And I never wanted to be a mother. First of all, I don't have the patience for it. And secondly, you have to be really stern with your kids. Yeah, so God's turning me into a school mom on YouTube. I have to be nasty with people at times. And then I go throw up afterwards. And honey, I'm going to be mean to you if, you, if you if it's warranted. If you show up on my channel and you make remarks that prove that you didn't care about God's word, that you disrespect him so much, that you don't even bother to look up your claims about his holy word, then honey, I'm going to charge you for that. I'm going to ream you out. doesn't mean I don't care about you. It's my job. And it should be your job to go do your homework before you come on my channel and say something that proves that you don't care about God's Word. Now, the other flip side of this, and I've been criticized for this too, hence this video, is that I have defended people whose faith are, is knowingly apostate, so-called. So okay? In other words, I've been accused, well, Brenda, you shouldn't defend that Catholic. Are you a Catholic because you defend a Catholic? No. I made a whole video list called Pope List. Pope Myth. Showing where Catholicism is wrong. Okay, but Catholics are Christians too. And a good number of them, especially on YouTube, are actually in God's system. They're under a teacher. Okay, so he's Catholic. Big deal. That's not for you to condemn. They're under a Catholic teacher. They're learning Catholic doctrine in the Catholic Bible, which for the Catholics is both Latin and Greek, as well as English. They're in the system. They're using 1 John 1 9. Catholics are real big on using 1 John 1 9. So I can say things against the doctrines, but you'll never hear me say anything against the people. Not the ones in God's system. By contrast, there are a whole bunch of Protestants, I guess you have to call it Catholic or Protestant, I'm, I'm not clear on the difference. Technically the Protestants are those who rebelled against Catholicism during the Reformation. That's what gave birth to it. There are a whole bunch of Christians out there who aren't in God's system. And no, they're not Catholic. There are a whole bunch of Jews out there who are Messianic Jews, and some of them are in the system. They're following Psalm 32.5, which is 1 John 1.9 in the Old Testament. They're following Psalm 66.18, which is 1 John 1.9 in the Old Testament. They're naming their sins to God. They're going to shul. They're under a rabbi who's Messianic. They believe in the whole New Testament or parts of it. You know, they got to learn. Is the whole New Testament valid? If I'm Jewish now and I believe in Messiah, is the New Testament valid? Part or whole? I don't know. Well, but that's a learning experience for them. They're in the system. Use 1 John 1 9. Study under your right teacher. Live and learn on the Bible you're learning under that teacher. Talk to God all the time and on occasion talk to other believers. That's the system. If you're in it, I don't care what faith you are. You want to be JW? Be JW. Be SDA. That's not up to me. I'm not your judge. See, again, not black or white. Not nice or nasty. All the time. The doctrines that are wrong, well, if it's your job to say that it's wrong for whatever reason, you say your job and then you get done with it and you're finished. Excuse me. I'm going to cough. But that's the doctrines, that's not the people. And if the people are in God's system, honey, it doesn't matter what denomination they are. And it doesn't matter whether they're right or wrong on doctrines either. They're in the system. They're under God right now. Now, occasionally, but not too often, in fact, I can't think of a single time, somebody who was actually in God's system came on my channel and, you know, there was a disagreement about something. I said, okay, well, I want to talk to that person. I want to hear what they got to say. Because they're in the system. 
You won't see me be nasty to them because they're in the system. I can tell who's in the system by the YouTube comment. I can tell who's not in the system by the YouTube comment. And then I'm, I have to go to God and say, okay, God, do I just not talk to this person? Do I have to censure him for something? Can I just walk away? Because, you know, it's not, not, it's not fun to have to judge somebody. Okay? But if you're supposed to censure them, see, because you've got Matthew 7, which says judge not, but then you've got Ezekiel 3 that says judge. So there's a time not to judge and a time to judge. And if you don't pick the right time to do the right thing, you're in duty with God yourself. Doesn't matter what the other person's doing wrong. You're wrong. And that's the, the dilemma I face every day. And theoretically, everybody faces every day as a Christian. There's a time when you have to say, I'm sorry, you're wrong. There's a time when you say nothing. There's a time when you say, well, you know, I understand where you're coming from, and you reason with it out. You have to know all that to become a good king. And honey, you don't get it right, ever. You get some dot of it right the first time, two dots of it right the second time. By the time you've done it a hundred times, you might get ten dots of it right. You're always getting some of it right and some of it wrong if you're practicing. And that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm sorry that this took so long, but hopefully that will help people understand. This is my job. It's not personal. On a personal level, I like pretty much everybody. I think there are two people on YouTube I don't like. And I don't talk to them. If I don't like you, I'm not talking to you. Okay? So if I'm talking to you, don't think... I mean, just know, because I'm talking to you, just know right away, it's not personal, even if I say something that doesn't sound good to you. Alright, I'm trying to obey my own God here. What am I supposed to say to you, if anything? And my personal attitude toward you is I like you. Huh? That's just me. It's really hard to dislike people. But, you'll notice, I can't let that get in the way. If I have to be nasty or say something critical, then I have to. And if you, and by the same token, okay, you can call me every name you like. You can tell me I'm twisting scripture, I'm not a good Christian, maybe I'm not safe. That's good. Okay, fine. I'm not offended by that. I, it, I don't even know what offends me. I'm not sure. I, I don't know what offends me anymore. Other than myself. <laughs> okay, I offend me all the time, every day. I hate me. <laughs> but that's beside the point. I don't hate you. So hopefully this helps you get a sense of, oh, wait a minute, there are parameters. There's a time to be nice and a time to be nasty. And it's okay. You're not a bad Christian if you're nasty. Christ paid for you. You can't be a bad Christian even if you are a bad Christian. He's your righteousness now, 2 Corinthians 5.21. So everything else is practice. Now, you want to practice getting nasty with me? Feel free. That, that's good. Practice. But don't let me catch you not doing your homework in my channel. Because if I catch you not doing your homework and you know what I'm going to do, the school mom is going to spank you with some nasty words. And then it's over. And you can spank me right back if you want. Okay? We got a deal? Peace out. Uh, why do I turn this off?